After Saturday's passage of President Biden's nearly $2 trillion COVID relief plan in the Senate, the bill is now headed back to the House for a final vote. That's right. And here to discuss this is California Congresswoman Norma Torres. Congresswoman Torres, thank you for being with us. We know that the $15 million wage, minimum wage, is out of that bill. There was a reduction to unemployment benefits than what was original to it. And then there's a limit on who gets those $1,400 stimulus checks. First of all, tell us how you're going to vote and if you think the bill as it stands will pass the House. I'm prepared to vote for this. It still includes $68 billion for vaccines, for testing and hiring of public health officials, which is desperately needed. We need to open up our, eco our economy. We need to ensure that children are able to safely go back to school. It's not going to happen without this assistance. And we need to ensure that their parents are able to pay back the rent um, that they owe and that they're able to continue to provide you know, healthy food for their children. So there's uh, $40 billion to fund homeless programs and to help people who have become um, who have become late on their on their rental payments and another 350 billion for first responders, frontline health workers and other essential workers. So the assistance is there, not as much in unemployment um, benefits, uh, but we will live to fight that battle another day. What do you see as the best path now to increase the minimum wage? I see a bill um, moving forward, uh, a standalone bill um, to, you know, put people on the record that the continuing to deny a minimum wage, a living wage to families that haven't seen a wage increase in over 12 years uh, is simply unacceptable. There is not a single county in our entire country uh, where people can live on minimum wage. And this idea that it's college students and high school students that are working these minimum wage is unrealistic. And, and I would invite you know my colleagues who stand in opposition of this wage increase to go out there in the community and talk to restaurant workers and talk to hospital workers that are still earning this very low wage and see how their lives could be improved by simply raising the wage. Congresswoman Torres, you came to this country at the age of five from Guatemala, and I know you represent a largely immigrant population there in California. Talk about what you think the Biden administration needs to do there at the border. What changes need to be made in terms of immigration reform? We must focus on the root cause of the problem for the unchecked culture of corruption that continues to thrive in, in the region. For example, the president of Honduras has been implicated in drug trafficking along with uh, his brother by the U.S. Um, Department of Justice. Prosecutors describe in great detail how his own brother, Tony Hernandez, hand deliver $1 million, a bribe by the Sinaloa drug cartel leader, Joaquin uh, Guzman El Chapo, um, to his brother, you know, the current president of Honduras. So we should not be shocked about the families and the condition of these families when they arrive at our southern border. Um, but we cannot continue to simply throw good money after good money, taxpayers' dollars to the region without holding these corrupt governments accountable for what they are doing to these families. We do want to ask you about the pandemic before we let you go. Uh, you have called for transparency in the vaccine rollout. There's been criticism of how slow it was at the beginning, then criticism that it, uh, we further highlight the disparities uh, in our health care system with some communities of color not getting access to it. We are now seeing about two million uh, vaccines a day um, happening on average, two million people being vaccinated. Are we finally getting it right? I think we're finally moving in the right direction, prioritizing low-wage workers, farm workers, uh, prioritizing frontline workers that are having to go to work every single day. Many of them dragging their children along and children are spending you know, long hours in closets or in parking lots uh, with their working uh, mothers. So these folks need to prioritize. They are in our communities, they're working, and we cannot continue to um, close our eyes to the to the fact that many of them you know have been dying over 500,000 people have died in our communities because you know we have not prioritized uh, communities of color uh, and people that are that are living without fresh food and without the uh, health care services that they need in their communities. All right. Congresswoman Norma Torres 
thank you so much for taking some time with us. Uh, hopefully you'll come back. There'll be plenty more to talk about for sure. And maybe even by the end of the week, if that bill gets signed and maybe checks start going out sometime uh, a few days after that. Thanks so much. Thank you. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.